Hi, Matthias here from PineGrow. Let's take a look at what's new in the latest PineGrow web editor release 6.6. .6. First of all, we added support for the picture element. And picture element is useful, for example, for supporting modern image formats such as WebP uh, with a normal image fallback. So now, if we go into the library panel, there we have picture element alongside the image. And let's drag it to the page and open up the element. And picture element works as a wrapper around the normal image element. So it is not shown kind of separately, it's just as a, a wrapper that lets us specify multiple sources that get then used on the enclosed image element. So in this project we have two versions of our surfer image. So we have a JPEG and we have a WebP version. So for the sake of clarity, the image itself is different here so that we will be able to notice when the JPEG is shown or when the WebP version is shown. And then to use it, we added the picture element on the page and let's remove the default placeholder. And then we have to take the image, the normal image and put it inside the picture element. And then with picture selected, go to the properties panel and say add source. And this inserts a source element that lets us specify alternative sources for this image. So in this case, we will select the WebP version, surfing.webp. And notice that the browser now displays the WebP image. And if we would open this page in a browser that doesn't support WebP, we would see the original um, JPEG um, there. So at the moment, the Pyangor support for picture element, it, it's kind of uh, bare bones. There is no image generation, like generating multiple image sizes and stuff like that. But still for a use case, such as supporting WebP images, it's quite handy. Another improvement in Pyangor 6.6 .6 is that the CSS grid options are now available in the context menu. So for example, if we select here the main and let me show you the CSS grid. So the layout of this page is a CSS grid. And now we, if we right click on the element, we now have CSS grid submenu with all the CSS grid settings such as deciding which CSS rule we are changing and then like the named areas that are available and the option to auto position the grid element and then to edit the parent grid or the grid of the item itself. So for example, if we now say that this element should be displayed in the header, we can do that directly from the context menu. And the same context menu is also shown in the tree when we right click on the element in the tree panel. Sometimes our HTML documents contain a lot of attributes that we want to get rid of. So like, for example, in this case, we have lots of data attributes that are not necessary. Um, and we added the page remove attributes tool that lets us easily remove attributes from all elements on the page. So either we can write specific names, or for example, I don't know, data share and click remove, or we can use wildcards to remove all matching attributes on the page.
And if we make a mistake, we can use undo to bring them back. And going back to our server image, the image properties, as well as iframe properties, now have the option to turn on the lazy loading. And this sets the standard HTML attribute loading to lazy and tells the browser that it can decide when it's the appropriate time to load the image. For example, as we scroll down the page before, right, just before the image comes into view. And that's not all. We also made the SAS compiler more stable, especially when changes happen very often. For example, on CSS grid projects uh, that use SAS, when we drag the grid handles, then the compilation is run like um, very rapidly. And Pangro now handles such situations better. Um, in the past, that sometimes kind of led to uh, hangups, and that was now improved. There was also an issue with CSS border radius control that didn't work correctly when like the, the all borders were equal. That was fixed. And we also have a bunch of WordPress improvements. For example, the menu smart action on Bootstrap 5 menus now correctly handles the active class that highlights the currently selected menu item. And all we have to do is make sure that the first item in the menu that is served, uh, that is used as a template for all other menu items contains the active class. And that helps Pinegrow to figure out where this active class is used. So that was a change in Bootstrap 4. It was used on, on the LI element, on the now item. And now in Bootstrap 5, it goes onto the link itself within this now item. So let's preview the generated code. And here we can see that the classes are now applied to the anchor link directly. Uh, as there should be in Bootstrap 5. We also fixed some things. So for example, with blocks, when you have the image, the title and any help string will be correctly shown in the WordPress block editor in, in the sidebar controls. And blocks can have multiple classes attributes on the same element. Uh, we also added the setting when you select the attribute block that is applied to HTML attribute that um, the value is prepended with or without the space character and function and code actions use text areas for code input. That will make it easier to input more than uh, uh, one line of code. And we also fixed an issue on WooCommerce Builder with displaying variable prices uh, when the product is on sale. That's it for Pioneer 6.6. We hope that you will enjoy this latest release.